Hello Literary Gladiators family. This is Gretchen and I am here to talk about, you know how in publishing sometimes it seems like authors might not have meant it but they kind of start a little bit of a publishing trend. Well whilst I've been reading my nonfiction lately I noticed like a little bit of a trend that has occurred and I'm calling it the Revolutionary War Travelogue. Basically, these books are nonfiction books, and instead of simply saying in 1776, this battle, blah, 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 what they do is they actually go to these places or follow in the footsteps of a particular figure, go to literally going to these historical places and writing about what happened there while actually visiting there and also talking about what that place looks like now. It's a really interesting concept and I've noticed three published in the past year or so and I've read two of those three and we're going to talk about them today because I think they are a really interesting look at this done well and this done not so well. So I'm just going to talk to you about these in the order in which I read them because I also think that that is really important. And so I started with Travels with George in Search of Washington and His Legacy by Nathaniel Philbrick. I had a lot of confidence in this book to be really good. Nathaniel Philbrick has written quite a few Revolutionary War history books that I really enjoyed. They were very narrative, they were really interesting. And so when I saw that he was doing a book in which he basically traces the steps of George Washington throughout the Revolutionary War, it sounded like a really, really cool idea to me that would maybe contemporize or make a little bit more informal the kind of history work that Nathaniel Philbrick has done in some of his earlier books. I will say that as a reader, it's taken me a while to like nonfiction books like this. I feel like when I first started doing my whole history journey, I really, really got focused in on like legit like nonfiction books in the stereotypical sense. And so something like a travelogue, which is includes the viewpoint of the author and is more informal, is definitely something that I had to warm up to, but I was excited for in this book until I started reading this book. This book ended up being a picture of what it looks like when a concept and the actual execution do not mesh together. And what I mean is that Nathaniel Philbrick, instead of like telling you this history of George Washington's journeys and these different battles as he visited them, it kind of felt very choppy where he would talk to you about the history of George Washington and what he did here, and then about Nathaniel Philbrick's visit there and what happened to him. And instead of it integrating really, really seamlessly, I felt like I was reading two different books. And one was a more traditional history of George Washington during the American Revolution and the other was this public history story of Nathaniel Philbrick visiting these different historical sites and libraries. I really did enjoy how much Nathaniel Philbrick took care to thank and name the different librarians and historians and you know local history people who he met along the way as someone who's worked in libraries and done stuff with local history. It was so good that this book really kind of read as a love letter to people who on the local level are making sure that no small detail of their small town's history is getting lost. And that was really cool. But it just it just seemed across purposes. It definitely felt like two different books. And I was like, Oh, man, maybe Nathaniel Philbrick should just have stuck to the George Washington aspect and not added this other aspect because I don't know what it added to this book. The thing about this book is that I still really, really liked the concept, even if I was not a massive fan of the execution. And I should say that I still rated that book around three stars. I don't think that it's a terrible book by any sense. So if you wanted to read it, you certainly could for yourself. But I didn't enjoy it in the way that I thought that I would and I couldn't figure it out. Was it the writing? Was it the idea? Did I really just not necessarily want to read a book that was like a travelogue and I just wanted a more stereotypical nonfiction text to give me this information? I just couldn't figure it out for myself. So when I found another Revolutionary War travelogue style book, I thought, 
I guess I'll try it out. Figuring that it would once again, for some reason, not be a book that I would enjoy, but at the very least after reading two different ones, I would maybe be able to figure out why. So then I read Revolutionary Road, Searching for the War That Made America Independent and All the Places It Could Have Gone Terribly Wrong by Bob Thompson. Now, I feel like I should tell you right up front, if you didn't catch it in that subtitle, that this is a nonfiction book that also dabbles in what ifing. And this, for some people who do history books, is not something that they enjoy, right? We know how history happened. We don't need to what if it. Those conversations aren't very useful. Whatever the reason is, this is definitely a book that deals in what ifing. I didn't think I would like that either, but I actually really enjoyed it in this book. To my surprise, I actually really enjoyed the entire thing. In this one, Bob Thompson does a very similar thing to Nathaniel Philbrook. He's also very kind and generous to all of the local history people he meets along the way, all of the people who help him write this book. But rather than following the exploits of one person, like George Washington, as Nathaniel Philbrick did, Bob Thompson, over a series of different journeys, traces the roots of the major campaigns and battles that happened throughout the Revolutionary War. So he's not focused on a singular person, a singular thing that happens, but rather going to battlefields, tracing the movements of troops, and seeing how these major, major battles that we you know, know as named in our history book really looked like on the ground and getting you know, if he didn't already have something, getting local history people to literally show him the exact hill or the exact road. And that's where a lot of the what ifing comes in is that Bob Thompson, once you're looking at the actual terrain that these battles were fought on, you understand so much more about how they went down the way they went down and how they could have been very different if this was a hill and not flat land, or this was flat land and not a hill. Just those basic differences really could have changed the outcome of entire battles. And it's really, really interesting to hear that described to you in a book. Now, I love public history. I love the idea of searching and finding and going to these places and also seeing how the historical markers, museums, whatever it is at that place describes the battle that took place there and also how that actually reflects factual accuracy, which is another thing that Bob Thompson talks about. You know, this plaque says this, but it doesn't mention this, or weirdly it talks about it like this. And I also really loved that aspect of it. So Thompson also far more seamlessly integrates his narrative into the history that he's telling you. It flows seamlessly from him finding a battlefield to him describing to you what happens there. And so while you're getting his own personal journey and story in between, it was not at all like the Philbrick title where I felt like it was just very, very PC. This flowed really, really well into itself. And I really, really enjoyed that. And I think because I almost felt like I was discovering some of this information alongside Bob Thompson, as opposed to learning, well, unfortunately for me, stuff that I already knew about George Washington from the Philbrick text, and then really not getting anything new or interesting or different from, you know, Nathaniel Philbrick actually going to some of these places because, you know, it's not like remnants of George Washington are necessarily really there anymore, right? Maybe a piece of furniture he may have sat on, but this dedication to, you know, battlefields and places and physical hills and trees and monuments and plaques, it just made this kind of book work so much better for me. I certainly don't know if my opinion is universal, but I will say that this style of travelogue book, whether it's Revolutionary War or not, really seems to work best when it's place-based and not person-based. So if you come across a similar book and you're interested in it, you may really be interested in ones that are more about the place than people. Personally, it worked so exponentially better for me to be place-based than person-based. So I mentioned that I had found a third title with a very similar theme. It will not surprise you to find that there is a reason that I haven't read it yet. 
And the reason is that this is another travelogue that is person-based. It's also about Revolutionary War era, kind of, but not really. So this book is In Pursuit of Jefferson, Traveling Through Europe with the Most Perplexing Founding Father by Derek Baxter. So for those of you who may not know Thomas Jefferson, who was our third president, was also our ambassador in France. He did an extensive amount of traveling while he was in France by carriage. And so that I assume is one of the routes or some of the many routes that Baxter is tracing in this book. However, I am not entirely certain what tracing Jefferson's travels in France will tell you about Jefferson himself, especially because what makes Jefferson such a perplexing founding father is that he wrote the wonderful worlds of the Declaration of Independence while owning many, many people on his plantation in Virginia. So I could imagine or see maybe tracing some stuff between Monticello and DC, for example, but I am interested on what the angle of France adds to the story. However, due to my less than stellar reception of my George Washington travelogue, I'm having a really hard time gearing myself up for reading this one. So if you've already read it, if you think I should give it a try, you should let me know because I might need a little bit of an extra boost to get this one started. I think it would be interesting, but I have to say play space for this style of books is just incredible. I really recommend Revolutionary Roads. And I hope that this video and this little niche genre that I've kind of discovered for myself was as interesting to you as it was to me as a new kind of book to explore. Thanks guys. Bye.